Hello, I'm Brett Geddes. I've been a columnist for Search Engine Land for a few years now, and all the articles have always been in text format. So I'm trying something new this month and putting the article in video format. So please, in the comments, let me know if you prefer the video format or if you prefer the text format. Now, what we're going to look at today is how to extract reports out of AdWords. Google has made a lot of changes to the reporting section. You can no longer run some of your old reports. You have to pull them to the interface. So what I've done is I've paused an account here so that I don't make any random changes as I shoot this video. We're going to walk through the various reports and how to get some of the old reports. So at a top level, you have your campaign screen. It gives you a snapshot of your campaigns. Now under the columns section, you can now choose what columns you want to be displayed. So if you want to run an invalid clicks report, you would have to choose it from this column first. If you want to run an impression share report, you choose competitive metrics. If you want to see your conversion data, then you choose your conversion metrics. And we'll save this. Now next, if we want to download this information, we can go to the download button. And we either we could create it right from here, which would have whatever data we're currently seeing or we can start to segment the data. So your most common segment is network or network with search partners. This would be Google's display network and search, and it breaks them out on different lines. Now the issue you're gonna run into is, let's say we segment this by network, and we create a report. When we look at this report, we'll see that our invalid clicks are zero. It's not that we don't have invalid clicks, and this could be impression share or various metrics is that when you do segmentation inside of your reports, Google does not show all the interface screens. So if you run a report and it's zero, it's probably due to a segment. Now your most common segments, and these go for any of the reports, ad groups, your ad copy, your keywords, networks, which is the content campaign, and other items we'll get to in a moment, is you have network, which is search or content network with search partners. This is content network, Google network, and Google search partner network. Click type. Now, if you're just doing search, this is going to be text. However, you can see if it's a URL click, or if you're doing mobile advertising, you can see if it's a phone call. There's some other click types that exist. Device type is mobile or computer. So you can start to see what devices. You can easily segment your data on timeframes such as day, week, month, quarter, year, day of week, hour of day. It is useful to look at your data segmented by some of these time frames to see if you have different conversion rates or cost per actions during time frames. And you might want to use Google's ad scheduling to take advantage of time frames where you have better CPAs. Now the last bit for impression share is exact match impression for whatever reason is a segment right now. I've been assured by Google's team it will become a column in the future. It's not yet. Now next you have conversion action name and conversion tracking purpose. If you have multiple conversion types, you're tracking an email newsletter and you're tracking a lead gen campaign and you're tracking an e-commerce conversion, three different conversion types, you can choose conversion action name to segment your data. Now, in the old world of running these reports, if you, and this again is for ad copy, keywords, ad groups, etc., is you would have a column that listed your keyword and how many conversions you received for each conversion type all on a single row, which made it very easy to figure out your value per click. One of my favorite metrics to work with from a bidding standpoint tells you what the value of a click is truly worth. In the new reports, what happens is each conversion item is a different row in your spreadsheet download. Basic performance columns like clicks, impressions will not be downloaded. So what happens then, if you want to get back to value per click and you have three, four, or five different conversion items, you need to make two reports. You need to make a first report that includes your basic performance data, such as clicks and cost. You make a second report that includes all your conversion items. Then you need to use VLOOKUP in Excel to recombine them. If you're not familiar with VLOOKUP, reference this article by Josh Dreiler. He's another 
search engine land column is. Is your paid search account structure optimal? Middle of this column, he explains the lookup, links to Microsoft's article, and has a video embedded here. So the lookup is essential to use if you have multiple conversion types and recombining the data. Now, if you have custom reports you're creating, maybe you make a keyword report every week that only includes quality score data. You can rename your report keyword quality score and you can schedule it to be sent. In the old days, you could receive the file in your email that included your reporting data. Now Google just sends notification that it's available. However, once you create these and you save a custom name, you can go to the control panel and library inside your account and all the reports are saved so you can run them again on demand. Under ad groups, you'll see all of your ad group information. So again, you can choose the columns you want. You can download the information. You can use the segments. It's the exact same as with the campaigns. If you want to run ad copy reports, again, very simple to click your columns, choose your metrics. Now, if you're doing both text ads and image ads or video ads, so forth, choosing the ad type is useful because the HTML preview is no longer available in the new reports. So choosing ad type, you can at least very quickly see what ad type it is. If you want to see the percentage served, it's hidden here under the columns. Next, you have the keywords tab. Let's say you're trying to figure out things like, where is my best click through it? Where am I getting, spending money from? When we look at this information, our clicks are six, two, three, they're very low numbers. So you might want to remove some information from the interface. Go to the filter column and create a filter. Say only if our clicks is greater than a thousand, show that information. Now you're getting rid of all the smaller click items to figure out where you're really spending some money. You can filter by multiple items as well. Let's say you're working on quality score. You want to, you want to find out places where you're getting a lot of clicks, you don't have good quality score. I want to see my quality score is three or under. So we apply this and this account has no matching ones. Maybe make this a four, apply. All right, this account doesn't have too many low quality scores. We go up to a five, so forth. So you can save these filters. You can choose the default name or you can even write your own name for this filter and apply it. Now, what's important, if you hit the close button, what happens, it closes the entire filter. So we're in a filter, you wanna hit this little button instead to close the filter. Your filters are saved, so you can very quickly go back and here's the filter we currently had enabled. We could open it, adjust it, reclose it again. So the dimensions tab is where a lot of the older ports now exist. So very useful to look at your information by geography to see if you have different CPAs, cost per actions, in different geographies. It might be that certain areas you're doing very well, you want to increase your budget. Other areas you're not doing well, you want to write specific ads for that area. And unfortunately, with geographic reports and any report on the dimensions tab, the filtering command doesn't exist. So when we look at things like cost per conversions, and numbers of conversions, conversion rates, well, it's all 100% at one. That doesn't mean much. So if you wanted to do filtering, where you see only areas that have four or more conversions or 10 or more conversions, download the data first. Then in Excel, hit the filtering tab. Now we can go over to our conversions. Then we can get rid of the zeros and ones and then look at our cost per conversion and sort it smallest to highest or vice versa by our different regions to find out where we're really doing well from a geographic standpoint. So if you're testing different landing pages, especially across multiple ad groups, the destination URL report is a good place to quickly set information. If we chose our destination URLs, we can then segment the data as well. And you always want to segment your destination URLs by at least network or network will search partners. Conversion rates by themselves are useless. Conversion rate only matters in the context of the ad and the traffic source, whether it's a keyword, a placement, so forth. 
If you're sending traffic to a particular page from both search and content, when you make a destination URL report and then dimensions tab, it combines that traffic together. So then if you segment that traffic, network with search partners or just network, then you can start to see more context of how your landing pages are actually doing. You can add additional segments by tracking types as well. Now what you can't do in the dimensions tab is segment by keyword unfortunately. There's no keyword segmentation, there's no placement segmentation yet. So in the new reporting interface, most, not all, but most of the data you used to have access to still exists. It's a matter of understanding how you can segment your data, filtering information if you only want to see low quality scores or low costs, choosing the correct columns, then finally exporting it, but remember to choose your segmentation when exporting it. And if you see columns that are zero, it's most likely a segmentation piece of information. So I hope you enjoyed today's column in video format. So if you enjoyed seeing this in video instead of text, please leave comments and let me know.